Welcome to our YouTube channel Dream Dynamic. Respect. It's not something you can beg for. And it's not something you can force. It's earned through living with integrity, discipline, and true self-respect. But here's the harsh reality. No matter how much you do for others, you might still find yourself overlooked undervalued, and unappreciated. Why is that? Because respect isn't just about the actions you take. It's about the way you carry yourself and the habits you hold onto. I learned this the hard way. For years, I thought that being agreeable, bending over backward, and always saying yes, would make people respect me. But all it did was make me smaller in their eyes. It wasn't until I started cutting out the behaviors that undermined my self-worth, like constantly seeking validation and making excuses, that everything changed. Respect didn't show up overnight. But when I started respecting myself, everything around me started to shift. And that's the message I want to share with you today. Respect starts from within. If you don't hold yourself to a higher standard, no one else will. So let's dive in and uncover the habits you need to let go of to truly earn the respect you deserve. Habit number one. No more excuses. Earn the respect you deserve. Let's be real. Making excuses is the quickest way to lose respect. Sure, we all do it. You might think your excuse is justified. Traffic was bad, your coworker dropped the ball, or life just threw you a curveball. But here's the harsh reality. Excuses don't matter. People respect results, not reasons. Think about it. When you consistently make excuses, you're signaling that you're not in control of your own life. I used to be that person. Always running late and blaming it on the traffic or unexpected events. I thought as long as I have a reason, it's all good. But it wasn't. Over time, I noticed that people began to see me as unreliable. Friends stopped depending on me. My boss passed me over for key projects, and even my family subtly adjusted their expectations. It became clear that excuses, no matter how valid they seemed, were damaging my reputation. The truth is, excuses make you look weak. They tell the world that you're not taking ownership of your actions, whether you were late because of traffic or because you hit snooze too many times. The end result is the same. You didn't show up when you said you would, and that's on you. It took me a while to realize that the problem wasn't the world around me. It was my mindset. I was letting myself off the hook, hoping people would just accept my excuses. But the world doesn't work that way. People respect accountability, not deflection. I'll never forget the moment it hit me. After being late yet again, a colleague looked at me and said, Why didn't you leave earlier? It stung, but they were right. I realized that every excuse I made was like saying, I'm not in charge of my life. How could I expect anyone to respect that? And here's the deeper truth. Excuses aren't just words. They're a mindset. They keep you stuck in a cycle of blaming outside circumstances instead of taking control. But the moment you start owning your actions, everything changes. When I stopped blaming traffic or circumstances and just admitted my mistakes, people began to trust me again. It was as if they could see the change in my attitude and they respected me for it. The world doesn't demand perfection. It values responsibility. 
people are more willing to forgive someone who says, I messed up and I'll do better next time than someone who keeps deflecting blame. Respect starts with being honest with yourself. If you keep hiding behind excuses, you'll never truly earn respect, not from others and not from yourself. So, next time you catch yourself about to make an excuse, pause, take ownership of the situation, acknowledge your mistakes, and move forward. It's not an easy habit to break, but when you stop making excuses, you'll be amazed at the shift, not only in how others see you, but in how you see yourself. Trust me, it's worth it. Habit number two, being lazy. Let's get straight to it. If you're lazy, don't expect respect. And honestly, you shouldn't. It might sound harsh, but it's the reality. You could have all the potential, talent, and dreams in the world. But if you're sitting on the sidelines, doing nothing, none of that matters. Respect doesn't come from potential. It comes from action. I used to think I could skate by on talent alone, doing the bare minimum, just enough to get decent results. But guess what? No one respected me for that. Sure, they might have said, he's got potential. But they didn't take me seriously. Why? Because laziness isn't about lacking ability. It's about lacking effort. And effort is what earns you respect. I'll never forget the moment I realized this. I was working on a group project. And while everyone else put in the effort, I coasted, thinking I could just chime in here and there. But when we presented, everyone's contributions were clear, except mine. And the looks I got afterward, that subtle disappointment said it at all. I wasn't just letting them down. I was letting myself down. I realized that people don't respect someone who doesn't pull their weight. Here's the thing about laziness. It's obvious. You might think people don't notice when you're slacking off. But they do. They see when you're not putting in the effort. When you're taking shortcuts and when you're avoiding hard work. And even worse, laziness drags others down when people stop expecting much from you. It's a clear sign that respect has already left the room. Laziness is more than just being tired or unmotivated. It's a mindset. It's choosing comfort over growth, telling yourself that it's okay to do the minimum. But people respect those who push through discomfort take on the tough tasks and show up even when they don't feel like it. Success doesn't come from talent alone. It comes from persistence and dedication. If you're not willing to put in the effort, why should anyone trust you with responsibility or look to you for leadership? You can't hide laziness. It shows up in the way you work, the way you speak, and the way you approach challenges. People notice when you're coasting, and they treat you accordingly. So, if you want to earn the respect you deserve, ditch the laziness. Show up, put in the work, and prove that you're willing to go the extra mile. Respect comes to those who earn it, not to those who wait for it. Habit number three. Neglecting your personal appearance. Let's talk about something that often gets overlooked. How you present yourself. It might sound like a small detail, but it sends a big message. If you're neglecting your personal appearance, don't expect people to respect you. Yes. It might sound superficial to say that appearances matter, but think about it. Your appearance is a reflection of how much you respect yourself. And if you don't respect yourself, and if you don't respect yourself, why would anyone else? I used to think that it didn't matter. That people should accept me for who I am, not how I look. So I'd throw on whatever was clean, roll into work, and expect people to value me for my skills and personality. But that's not how it works. What I didn't realize was that my careless approach to my appearance sent a signal that I didn't care. Not about myself 
not about my work, and not about the people I interacted with, and that made it hard for others to take me seriously. There was a moment when this hit me hard. I showed up to an important event looking like I had just rolled out of bed, wrinkled clothes, messy hair, the whole deal. The moment I walked into the room, I could feel the shift. People's attitudes toward me were different, and I wasn't getting the respect I thought I deserved. Meanwhile, others who took the time to present themselves well were instantly noticed and respected. It was a wake-up call. Your personal appearance is a form of non-verbal communication. It's not about being flashy or wearing expensive clothes. It's about showing that you value yourself enough to put in the effort. When you take care of how you look, it says, I respect myself and I respect the people I'm with. And people respond to that. They're more likely to listen to you, trust you, and yes, respect you. Think about it. When someone shows up looking unkempt and disorganized, what's your first impression? Probably something like, this person doesn't care. And if they don't care about themselves, you subconsciously assume they won't care about their work, their relationships, or their responsibilities. On the flip side, when someone walks into a room looking well, groomed and put together, it immediately sets a tone of respect. They're seen as someone who takes themselves and their role seriously. After that eye opening moment, I made a conscious decision to change how I presented myself. I started putting effort into my appearance, dressing with intention, focusing on grooming and taking pride in how I showed up each day. The shift in how people treated me was almost immediate. Suddenly, I was taken more seriously and I felt more confident and respected. Most importantly, I began respecting myself more. The truth is, people form impressions quickly, and those impressions matter. If you want respect, you need to present yourself as someone who values themselves. Neglecting your appearance sends the message that you don't care, and if you don't care, no one else will either. So, Here's the bottom line. Taking care of your appearance is about more than looking good. It's about self-respect. It's about showing up as the best version of yourself, inside and out. Stop telling yourself that appearances don't matter. They do, and they always will. Respect starts with how you carry yourself. So take that extra time in the morning, show up with intention, and watch how the world responds. Respect yourself. Habit number four. Ignoring boundaries. Here's a hard truth. If you want to lose respect faster than you can blink, ignore people's boundaries. Boundaries aren't just suggestions. They're essential. When you dismiss or overlook them, you're sending a clear message that their feelings, space, and comfort don't matter. And that's a guaranteed way to lose respect. I used to think that being deeply involved in people's lives was a sign of caring. I believed that giving constant advice, checking in frequently, and always offering my opinion was what made me a good friend. But in reality, I was overstepping. I didn't realize that what I thought was caring came across as intrusive. And because I ignored people's boundaries, I lost their respect. There was a time when a close friend started pulling away from me. I couldn't understand why. I'd call her daily, text her non-stop, and try to involve myself in her life. I thought I was being supportive, but in reality, I was crossing boundaries. Eventually, she told me, I just need some space. It feels like you don't understand that. It hit me hard. I realized that by ignoring her need for space, I had made her feel unheard and disrespected. Here's what I learned. Boundaries aren't barriers. They're healthy limits that protect people's mental, emotional, and physical space. Ignoring someone's boundaries tells them, I care more about my needs than your comfort. And who wants to respect someone who operates like that? Let's dig a little deeper. Respect 
isn't just about being nice. It's about understanding that people have the right to their own space, to say no and to set limits. It's about honoring their autonomy and not taking it personally when they draw a line. When you respect someone's boundaries, you're showing them that you recognize their needs. And that's when mutual respect begins to grow. I had to learn to take a step back, give people the space they needed, and let them come to me when they were ready. And you know what? When I started respecting others' boundaries, they respected me more. My relationships became stronger, more genuine, and I was no longer seen as the person who couldn't take a hint. But this isn't just about friendships. It's just as important in the workplace. Maybe a colleague prefers working independently, but you keep pushing for updates. Or perhaps your boss appreciates direct communication, but you overwhelm them with unnecessary details. In those moments, you're not just crossing a line. You're losing their respect. It's about valuing their time, space, and preferences. Here's the real takeaway. Boundaries aren't just about keeping people at arm's length. They're about keeping relationships healthy. And healthy relationships are built on mutual respect. If you can't respect someone's boundaries, you can't expect them to respect you. It's a two-way street. By honoring the limits people set, you're showing them that you value their comfort and their right to decide what they need. Think about it like this. Every time you ignore a boundary, you're chipping away at the trust someone has in you. And without trust, respect is impossible. People will start to distance themselves because they don't feel safe or understood. Boundaries are a way for people to protect their well-being and when you trample over them, you're showing a lack of care. So, if you want to earn respect, start paying attention to boundaries. Notice when someone is setting one, whether it's subtle or direct. Don't take it personally. See it as an opportunity to show that you respect them as an individual. When you start doing this, you'll find that people respect you more too. They'll feel safe around you trust you more and value your presence in their lives because you're someone who understands the importance of personal space and emotional well-being. Habit number five, taking credit for others' work. If there's one surefire way to lose respect fast, it's taking credit for someone else's hard work. It's a move that doesn't just disappoint the person whose efforts you overshadowed, but also raises eyebrows among those who witness it. And here's the reality. People don't forget. This kind of behavior chips away at your trustworthiness. And once that trust is gone, it's incredibly difficult to win it back. I've been there myself, and it's not something I'm proud of. Early in my career, I was desperate to stand out and be noticed. During a team project, I contributed. But one of my colleagues put in an extraordinary amount of effort. When it came time to present our work, I made it sound like I was more involved than I actually was. I didn't outright lie, but I made sure the spotlight lingered on me, not where it truly belonged. At first, the recognition felt great. People praised my contributions and I soaked it all in. But here's the thing. The truth always comes out. My colleague quickly realized what had happened, and soon others did too. The admiration I'd gained turned into disappointment and mistrust. It was a hard lesson. But it taught me that respect can't be earned through shortcuts. Real respect comes from honesty, collaboration, and lifting others up. Taking credit for someone else's efforts isn't just about hurting them. It's about hurting yourself. It signals a lack of confidence in your own abilities, a sign that you're not sure if you can succeed on your own. It's an insecure move that doesn't reflect true strength. And if you're constantly looking for shortcuts to success, you'll never earn genuine respect from those around you. 
Imagine how demoralizing it is for someone to see their hard work go unrecognized when you take credit for their contributions. You're robbing them of the satisfaction and pride that comes with being acknowledged. This creates resentment and breaks down trust. Over time, it can damage your reputation in a way that's nearly impossible to repair. And let's face it, taking credit is a form of betrayal. It sends the message, I see your effort, but I care more about my own success than celebrating yours. That kind of attitude might give you a temporary boost, but it won't last. People can see when someone is hogging the spotlight, and even if they don't call you out directly, they'll remember it. That kind of behavior slowly erodes the respect you've built up and can leave you feeling isolated. But here's the good news. Owning up to your mistakes can be incredibly powerful. If you've ever taken credit that wasn't yours, start by acknowledging it. Apologize, give proper recognition, and make it clear that you value their contributions. This isn't just about setting things right. It's about rebuilding trust. Moving forward, make it a habit to always give credit where it's due. Celebrate the efforts of those who help you along the way. In fact, Sharing credit doesn't take away from your success. It enhances it. When you recognize others, you show that you're confident in your own abilities and secure enough to lift others up too. People respect leaders who share the spotlight, who are fair and honest, and who understand that success is a team effort. Here's the deeper truth. Success that comes at the expense of others isn't real success. It's hollow. You might win in the short term, but in the long run, you'll find yourself isolated and without the respect that truly matters. Real respect comes from being fair, honest, and willing to recognize the contributions of others. So, if you want to build a reputation of integrity, start by giving credit where it's due. Celebrate others' wins alongside your own. Show that you're the kind of person who values teamwork and honesty. When you do, you'll find that people are more likely to trust, follow, and respect you. That's how you become someone others genuinely admire. Not because you're perfect, but because you're real. Habit number six. Embracing emotional mastery. The key to earning respect. Being emotionally reactive can be one of the most damaging habits if you want to cultivate respect in your relationships, whether at work or in your personal life. It's not just about having explosive outbursts. It's about allowing your emotions to dictate your actions, words, and decisions. When people see that you can't maintain your composure, they start to question your ability to handle responsibility leadership, or even friendship. I've experienced this firsthand. There was a time in my life when my emotions controlled me. If I was criticized, I'd get defensive or shut down. I thought I was standing my ground, but in reality, I was just showing how little control I had. Looking back, I realized that emotional instability sends a message of weakness, not strength. Think about the people you admire. They're calm under pressure, able to accept feedback without losing their cool. This is true strength. In contrast, being emotionally reactive paints you as unpredictable, and people will instinctively distance themselves from you. Nobody wants to tiptoe around someone whose emotions can explode at any moment. Here's the deeper truth. Emotional reactivity often stems from insecurity. When we react strongly, it usually signals that we are protecting something fragile within ourselves, our ego, our self, image, or a fear of being hurt. But here's the harsh reality. No one respects fragility disguised as emotional outbursts. Let's take a moment to reflect. Have you ever seen someone lose their composure, whether from anger or tears? Instead of respect, what you often feel is pity or embarrassment. This is exactly the kind of response you invite 
when emotions take control. So, why do we react so strongly? It's often because we feel threatened, our egos are bruised, or we believe we are losing control. But true power lies not in the outburst. It's in your ability to remain composed when chaos surrounds you. When you can stay calm in stressful situations, you demonstrate real strength. And that's how you earn respect. Mastering emotional control is a skill that can transform your relationships. The Stoics believe that while we cannot control external events, we can control our internal responses. This is where your true power lies. By choosing to remain grounded, you not only gain respect, but also navigate situations more effectively. When you maintain your calm, you think clearly, make better decisions, and avoid saying things you might regret later. If you appreciate what we're doing here, please hit the subscribe button. Also, don't skip any part of the video to ensure you capture the full essence of the discussion we're about to have.